Hello everyone and welcome to another interview with an amazing author and today I'll uh, please say a big welcome to Caleb Azuma Nelson. Hello Caleb. Hello. Caleb is a British Ghanaian author um, uh, who's also a photographer and the author and we're here today to talk about his debut novel Open Water. Um, so Caleb your name appeared on loads of lists of amazing debuting authors, uh, books to look um, look forward to in 2021. Um, your book has been called Brilliant, Majestic, Intense. So oh, no pressure, yeah? <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, so could you please let us know, um, those people who have not read a book yet, what is the book about? And maybe if you could just read a, a fragment from it as well. Yeah, of course. Um, so the book is a it's a love story set in southeast London about two young artists who meet in a bar uh, connection and across the course of the book just find themselves engaged in this like pull and tug that that occurs when you when you're falling for someone. Um, but I also think that the book is a is a is a love letter to to southeast London and to to black art and expression. Um, in particular, like expression and this idea of this idea of like being able to express freely. Um, and so in that way, it's kind of like a letter. It's like a, it's like writing towards freedom in a sense. Excellent. Um, I hope that piqued everyone's interest. Um, are you able to read as a fragment? Yeah, yeah, of course. You say... The sky has erupted and there's white ash on the ground. The dog has never seen snow before. It alternates between bounding across the icy plains and staying stock still, aside from the tiny shake in its hind legs. Your grandma had never seen snow until the year you were born, while she awaited your arrival and those tender flakes fell in a furious storm, clumping on the ground. She got on her knees and began to pray for herself, her daughter, an unborn grandchild. On the same day, your mother was on the top deck of a bus, cowering as a man waved a gun, and she emerged unscathed. You're not religious, but when you hear stories like that, it makes a man want to believe. You imagine your grandma in fervor, praying for your body barely formed, your spirit in gestation. Now her body is falling apart, or rather has fallen. Her spirit is everywhere. You don't know if you'll ever return and see where she has been laid to rest. But on this occasion, you do not have the strength. You're not religious, but you're praying for your own mother and father as they make the journey back to Ghana, back home. Your knees are on hard wooden floor, prostrating at the foot of your own desires when the dog nudges you in the back. The dog has never seen snow before. The sheet above is cloudless, lacking in form and detail. Have you ever looked at the sky at night after it has snowed? Orange glow, light caught between somewhere, makes you want to reach up and touch. So sometimes you pray. If prayer is mostly desire from the inner self, then you're praying for a safe trip for her. Oh, thank you. You're um, welcome. So can I just say the first thing that struck me in your book is just that amazing, I don't know, poetical language. Oh, thank you. Um, it's, it's when you read, when you, when I've read your book, um, I find myself um, looking at, at the pictures you painted with your words and I was wondering is that for anything to do with the fact that you're also a photographer and you are working in pictures as well as words mm -hmm. are I these think, two connected yeah yeah I think the it's interesting because for me like I've always thought of myself as a writer first but in this process of writing both writing open water and actually being away from it I've been able to embrace like this identity of like these multiple parts of myself and how the different 
the different um, art forms that I'm engaged with are connected. I think that the way that the way that the photographs work for me, they just kind of like provide this, these like scenes, they provide these like kind of like moments in, and from there, like I start kind of like transcribing these moments that I can see in my head. And then there's this, it's funny you mentioned painting because so many of my photographic influences are painters. Like I'm, I'm not always looking towards photography. I'm, I'm usually looking towards painting and kind of like more like formal portraits and wondering how I can like structure my own portraits in that way. Um, and I think the way that for me that portraiture works is the same way that I wrote this book. Like I'm so interested in like providing an overall scene and allowing whoever is in front of the camera or whoever is on the page to have this very like wholesome, like kind of take of their own lives to like provide their whole self. Yeah, because what I've noticed is just it's not just a dialogue. It's not really much of a dialogue. But it's the um, because the book is written in a um, second person narration. So to me, it sounded like it's a deliberate tool to distance yourself from a book a bit, and so you're talking to the character as well as the reader as well. Mm -hmm. And as a reader, I saw the images but somehow I was also able to get into people's head and hear with their thoughts mm -hmm. as well. So that's how I interpreted this book, which follows like, yeah, it, it really made an amazing impression on me. <laughs> is, that, is that how you, is that why you've chosen the second person narration at all? There was this like very, because I was using the second person from the beginning and it was very clear that there was this intimacy that was afforded with the second person where the reader is both someone in the audience and also the protagonist. Like you're able to be like on both sides of the narrative and and then and then that means you're also in between what's happening. And so you're really, you're not just knowing what's going on, you're really feeling it too. And was it also deliberate um, to choose a second person? Because quite a lot of your book deals with quite painful issues that are presumably not just for your character, potentially for yourself as well mm -hmm. the trauma mm -hmm. um the threat and the microaggression of being a black person and mm -hmm. being seen as a threat mm -hmm. so I was think, that have to do something with that as well yeah i think in that way it was kind of it allowed me to it allowed me to like bring the reader as close as possible to the feeling like i wasn't i'm someone who doesn't like shy away from stuff like I don't I don't want to draw back because I think so much of my written work or my photographic work is all very much like I'm trying to get as close as possible and with this like I wanted to push as close as possible so that the reader could really feel what it was that this character was going through or that like I might have been through as well. And for the people who are wondering a bit more about the sort of um, taking the writing for the pictures, I've seen your mood board on Instagram as well. And I thought it's such a great idea. Is this how you started writing this book? How did you start writing this book? <laughs> I think, I don't know, like in, I'm always writing, like I'm always working on something, even when I'm not like actively doing it. Like I'm always reading and collecting images and watching and listening. And I think that this this book kind of arrived at the culmination of like a long period of of just like researching and and reading and writing but also trying to reckon with myself and my own identity and my own existence and so that it was kind of like the meeting point of those two things where I was I was really feeling kind of like in touch with myself and who I was but I was also like really enjoying like I I think I mentioned before we started that I wrote so much of this at the British Library where like, I'd get there in the morning and I'd check out like six or seven books and I'd just sit like for the first couple of hours and I'd just read and like make notes and write. Um, and then I would start, and then I would start my writing for the day. And that was such a nice process because, you know, every, every time you, I get there, I have the opportunity to take out something different or to re return to the same book if, if I wanted to. Um, so who was your influence? Who did you read? I was reading, I was reading a lot of poetry at the time. Um, 
So I was reading a lot of Langston Hughes and Gwendolyn Brooks. Um, and there's a really good book that combines, I can't remember the exact name of it, um, but it combines photography and poetry by African poets. Um, so it's like portraits of these of these uh, poets across the course of like 50, 60 years and then their, their poetry is printed beside it. And I remember reading some of, I remember reading some of that work, like I spent a couple of days with that book. I remember reading some of the work and just being astounded. And also seeing, drawing comparisons to like artists that I, that I enjoy at the moment. So there's a rapper, Earl Sweatshirt, whose dad was the South African poet laureate. Um, and there was like a whole section on South African poets in that book and the style of their writing is very similar to his. And so it was so interesting to see this kind of like, this legacy in the sense that I would, I would have never made that connection if I hadn't just been like pouring through the pages, which was, yeah, so much of the, so much of that time was like such a gift because it, it kind of reinforced for me that like everything is connected in a way and that there were like, there are ways to draw lines across different things. And there's like, there are happy accidents to be found everywhere. But you, do you call yourself poet as well as writer? No, 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 no. I'm like, I have too much respect for poets. I think they're amazing. I actually am just like, the ability to, to like, I, like this book is not a long book. It's like 160 pages, but like poets will say what I said with this whole book in like four lines. And I'm just like, that's that's crazy like yeah I have a lot of respect for poets and I think that I don't think I could have written this book without reading poetry in the way I was at the time okay so this is your poetic influence how about the narration how about the the, the, the authors you mm. the, the novel authors you, you mm. enjoy reading and mm. potentially influence your work as well I think um James Baldwin definitely is just like is a voice that like I'm always hearing like I it's an unforgettable voice right there's a very there's something like very wise yet like quite playful about his voice which I yeah I've I've always just have in my head the same with Toni Morrison like her work is just like has always just resounded for me um Zadie Smith who I think has like a massive influence on this book and is obviously like featured a few times within it but I remember reading NW when I was 18 or 19 and and kind of having in a sense having the confidence to then write my own novel about my kind of tiny slice of London too um so yeah hers, hers is a massive influence on my work and uh, yeah funny you mentioned that that was just what I wanted to ask you about <laughs> So I've heard somewhere that someone referred to um, South East London as another character in your book. Yeah, yeah. Deliberate. Yeah, I, do you know what's funny? I didn't, I didn't realise how, how like much of a feature it was until, until I stepped back from it. I was like, oh man, this is like, I really need to lean into this because for me, you know, I've grown up in South East London I, li I still live in South East London. Like this is currently where my world begins and ends. And it's like, it's very much like a, yeah, it's such a big part of my identity, not just the place, but the community that, that, is, that is here. And I'm sure every, everyone from different areas of London or the UK will say the same about their area, but mine's the best, so. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll discuss it later. <laughs> off the screen um so and also so, so what i've noticed is quite a lot of what you would call the autobiographical elements in this book mm -hmm. so your main character well the two of them but the, the main male character is a photographer mm -hmm. he also lives uh, he also lives in southeast london mm -hmm. are there any sort of you know um elements of your own life in this book i'd say like the events are really they're all the events are fictional aside from actually the like one of the only like real events in the book is the meeting of zadie smith um like but the events are like fiction are mostly fictional but the feelings themselves are very like very real they're very personal like i know what it means to be 
stopped in search like I know what it means to like lose my grandma like in that way like I think that though for me like I was kind of tapping into my own personal feelings and then working from from there to like create this very like honest experience yeah so this is obviously not only a story of black culture which we sort of touched a bit um but it's also a story about what does it mean to be black and I found those moments in the book when you describe the feelings of the character mm -hmm. very emotional mm -hmm. especially that you you sort of like as I said before you feel like you are talking to you talking to to the reader as well as the characters in your book mm -hmm. so um and obviously that's a massive part of your life yeah. being black man mm -hmm. being um navigating in everyday's racism mm -hmm. um i was wondering how much do you think white people can possibly gain from your book and i'm not saying you wrote it for specific audiences but do you think the take on will be different mm -hmm. i think it's it's been interesting hearing from readers what has resonated with them in different ways. I think that there's there's something that black people have experienced where because I'm not I'm not I can't I couldn't possibly write for every black person um existing, but there's something that black people have said where it's like, okay, I saw parts of myself or my own experience, which was really important for me to kind of like write from inside my own like my own experience outwards as opposed to from like the outside looking in um i think for white people there's like there's a perhaps not a recognition but an a new way of a new way of of seeing of under of understanding that is afforded when it's like presented to you in like a there's a lot of these experiences like there's no real hiding or like kind of like mixing up with them like they're very clear and very stark experiences um and so that that means it's kind of like you read that and and it's your choice whether you digest that or not or you take that on board but it's it's there right <laughs> yeah it was certainly certainly resonated with me mm -hmm. and um, and also the, also the bits of the um black culture but, the problem is, I don't know much about music. Not just black music, I mean, just don't know much about music. So mm -hmm. on those places when you, music is very important in your book, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why yeah. is that? So, why is that? Because we talk about art, we talk about the parts of the art, we talk about the photography, mm -hmm. um, the poetry, and we talk about the music as well now. Yeah, of course. The, it's, the music was, it took the, it took the book to new heights. Like, it really elevated a narrative that like I was already I was already like kind of like really I, I really enjoyed writing this book and what would happen when I would insert a song is that it would add a new dimension to the narrative that I not even I could anticipate because in a way I was kind of writing off of the music I was writing inspired by the music and so like listening to that stuff while you're writing it kind of like it encourages stuff that you may not have even realized that you wanted to write about or that you could write about um and pres provides this real kind of rhythm to to the book that because there's there's not an enormous amount of plot in in this book but there's there's a lot of feeling and I think that the music only serves to add to that yes that's definitely true that's how I see it I just um and I know you've got a Spotify playlist as well yeah yeah excellent it shall be linked <laughs> Is this the stuff basically you've listened to while writing the book? Yeah, so like all of the songs in the book and then a lot of stuff that was that was kind of like orbiting around while I was writing is, is in that is in that playlist. And I think I don't know, a playlist for me is also quite another like quite intimate thing, right? Like it's a it's a way of spending time listening to music. And so that yeah, the playlist is something intimate too. So you have also special influences uh, through the music, yeah. some 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 um, musicians that influence your writing as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, Earl Sweatshirt, who I mentioned, is like he's a he's just great. Like the 
like brevity is his thing like he makes really short albums um and that was something that I was really leaning into with this um and then Solange Knowles who is like just a brilliant songwriter and just has like very like just lines where I'm just like I like I hear them and I have to like replay them like I have to listen to that again and really gauge its meaning um Kendrick Lamar as well who's featured a few times in the book um yeah like so many of the people in in the playlist the tribal quest like big big influences like it's it's the rhythm of the work that really that really gets me um so as i said the playlist will be linked so you can check it out and i can check it out <laughs> in detail <laughs> you never know you learn something new every day <laughs> um so we talk about a lot about the uh, uh, background of the book, but mm-hmm. can you say yourself, there's not much plot. Yes, that's true. There's not much plot in it. Um, but it is a love story between two people. Um, why didn't you name them? The same reason it's a second person. Like, it's, it's just a m- more intimate experience when it could be you too. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, you're right. It's, it's very... Again, um, it's not the sort of love story you, you would expect. It's not the type of uh, a writing about the love story you might expect. Mm-hmm. For example, what I've noticed, particularly struck me, that your characters are having this long distance, distance friendship relationship. Mm-hmm. The love blossoms through them talking to each other. Mm-hmm. So this is what I've noticed about the, the references to the current culture there. Mm-hmm. But when you would not, when you would expect people to use emails, WhatsApp, mm-hmm. text messages to show communication, they talk. They yeah. spend a lot of time talking. Yeah. Could you talk a bit about that? I think it was, it was just a, it was a more intimate way of me providing their own intimacy and kind of showing their shared language as it was developing. Um, because I think that, uh, like electronically sometimes things can get lost and I think transcribing electronics within literature is little, like still something that I'm trying to work out um but I think it also like it provided this like sense of kind of of like a of like a timeless sort of love like it didn't feel like it was like rooted even though this book is very contemporary it didn't feel like it was kind of rooted in like a kind of oh well you know I need to whatsapp this person like yeah like it it kind of it meant that like I was able, I, it was another freedom that I was just affording myself. So they use Ubers, but they don't have uh, the WhatsApp. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people like this exist. I mean, it's always nice to actually speak to someone. And I think if you're in a long distance um, relationship, you would rather talk to someone anyway, rather than just text them. I mean, you can text them as well, but you know, that's a different conversation you can have yeah. while you're actually <laughs> on the phone with someone. Oh, don't worry about the bills. <laughs> um, so you, you said you 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 sat in the British Library and you just wrote. Was it all the very sort of easy sort of part for you? Were there any hard bits in this novel that you had a difficulty writing? All, all of it. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because no, you, made it so, like, you, know, you made it sound so easy. I just sat and it flew. It's brilliant. I mean, fantastic. Talk it about was, struggles. I wrote it very quickly. I wrote the first draft within like two and a half months or so. Um, and it was very much like I... The reason it was difficult... I mean, it was hard to write in the terms of like actually craft wise trying to craft something that like I would be proud of when I walked away from it but I think more so was like constantly embracing my own invul- my own vulnerability and encouraging that to emerge within the narrative that was a really difficult thing to do to like return to the page each day knowing that like I would have to tap into like these feelings that like I wasn't that you don't in- encounter every day, like you're not trying to process every day. That that was the most difficult thing about it. So how did it happen that this book was published? You wrote it and mm. suddenly it just magically appears on all those lists. Oh my goodness, yeah. I think it's been a long time in the works. Like it, I signed my contract in October 
2019, like the 1st of October 2019. And I think the, the, like, the period after, because I finished Open Water in the, at the beginning of September 2019, and then we sent it out to publishers pretty much straight away. And then it became clear that a lot of publishers were interested. Um, and it ended up going to like a nine way auction, which is like, it's still just baffling to me. Like I, it's still very, very surreal, but it, you know, all of that happens. And then you do the, the editorial process. You kind of like, you make those small, like fine tunes and adjustments. And then you just wait. <laughs> and then you just like, you kind of just, and I think it was made even worse because we, like, you know, around the time that I finished the editing is when our first lockdown started. So it was kind of just like, well, guess I will uh, wait till next year. Um, but the wait has been worth it. It's definitely been worth it. So um, how do you deal with the pressure of being on those lists and and um, and uh, being on the promising debuts and, and seeing so much buzz around your book? How does um, it, how does it feel? It's, it's, it hasn't like, it's still, it hasn't set in. A lot of friends who also write have said it won't set in in like it it just won't happen but I'm yeah I'm just really grateful for it I guess like it's not really I I'm still like really astounded by all of the support and and by like people really like feeling what I was I was trying to express and and so yeah for me like I'm just I'm really I'm very much grateful for it so are you working on something new now yeah slowly but surely Slowly are bit. you able to say anything um it is a it's a it, it's there's it's a, there's another love story involved um but i think where like open water is very like is very focused in on two people like this is kind of like looking at like a wider community and and the people who make us who we are sounds so exciting <laughs> cannot wait seriously i absolutely i must say I, I absolutely loved your book. It's it's it is a very thin book, but it packs a bunch. There's a lot to discuss here, and I could talk to you about all sorts of bits and pieces I picked up, and then probably will call you again and say, "Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. <laughs> <laughs> How about we have a chat later?" Or, oh, by the way, I hope you do come to the library once we reopen, and you know you can actually physically absolutely. see the people. <laughs> And, you know how people actually read your book and really liked it so that's that's a highlight <laughs> if we do it do you reckon if you just do it now then you have to come few <laughs> 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 books now excellent <laughs> mm -hmm. okay and if people wanted to um see um more uh, hear more from you do you have any gigs coming up in the near future anything that people yeah. can look at um listen to watch you Attempt. Yeah, I will, um, I will be in conversation with Yemisi Aribisala um, on the 28th of March in conjunction with Chikoni Restaurant. Um, so you can get tickets on their, on their website. But I think that's going to be a really lovely conversation where we'll be talking open water and food and intimacy and love. Um, and I think that'll be really nice. Food, excellent. Oh, just fun. See, it's one of the things. There's so many beads. We haven't spoke about the carnival. We haven't talked about food. We I haven't know, even I touched know. Ghana. There's so much stuff to talk about. You need to come for the event. I will. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and if people want to uh, find you online, do you have you on website? Do you on social media at all? Yeah, I'm on social media. Um, I'm on Instagram at Caleb underscore a nelson and then on twitter at caleb a nelson excellent it shall be linked as well fantastic well um just want to say that you know um i wish you all the best uh, you. the book has in my father potential to become amazing and like you know really something significant in the um in the literature and absolutely loved it. I hope our audiences, once you've, um, you know, they've read it, they loved it as well. Please do read the book. I will link all the links to the, uh, link links to the catalog so people can borrow it, um, uh, borrow it from the library, but unless you really want to buy it as well, but borrow it from the library as well. 
And um, yeah, I'm wishing you all the best. And thank you so much, Caleb, for um, having a chat with me about this book and uh, being so open about uh, how uh, personal this book is for you. <laughs> and uh, I wish you all the best with your future projects. And yeah, thank you very much. And um, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this chat. Uh, please keep an eye open for more chats with the authors coming up. And uh, that's from all from us for today. Thank you.